All right, I'm John Berman, live in Brooklyn this morning. There is a manhunt underway for the person who opened fire on a subway station, the crowded subway station, right behind me yesterday, firing 33 times. 29 people injured, including five students, 10 people shot. Joining me now, Jillian Snyder. She's a retired NYPD officer, and Peter Licata, former supervisory special agent for the FBI and former lead bomb tech for the FBI in New York City. Jillian, I just want to start with you. Whoever did this, whoever fired a gun 33 times at a subway here, right, is still on the loose this morning. So what's being done to keep people safe? So right now, the NYPD has launched a massive manhunt in collaboration with the feds, and they're trying to ascertain the location of this individual. They're doing social media checks. They're talking to anyone that may know the suspect or person of interest. They're going, he doesn't have any ties right now or that are known to New York City. So they're actually reaching out to external agencies to try and find you know, where he's from, who knows him, who may know where he is. Frank James is the person who's been listed as a person of interest here. Keys to a U-Haul that he was believed to have rented were found at the scene. Person of interest, what's being done to find him? What's being done to find him is right now, they're combing his social media. They're interviewing potential friends and family. And what they want to do is they want to corroborate any information that they had, uh, any leanings that he might have told his friends and family about anything about his actions. And they're also looking to eliminate any collaborators, facilitators, both monetarily and materialistically, that may have helped him get to New York City with that U-Haul van. The biggest thing that the law enforcement is trying to do right now, not alone just piece together his route, through CCTV, but is to take him from that person of interest into a suspect. And they're going to do that via forensics and those interviews that they're doing currently with friends and family or any of his associates that may come out and say, I know who Frank James is. It was last night around, what, 7 o'clock when they released the picture and the name Frank James as a person of interest. So 12 plus hours at this point, how hard will it be for him to hide if he is trying to hide? You're in New York City, you're hiding in plain sight but your world is starting to get smaller and smaller. My experience here as former FBI agent and on the JTTF, uh, Faisal Shazad, the Times Square, attempted Times Square bomber of 2010, took us about 96 hours to fully identify and locate him. Ahmed Rahimi, the Chelsea bomber 2016, he was identified and, and arrested within 72 hours. So again, Mr. James's world is starting to get smaller and smaller by the hour. Uh, and again, Frank James listed as a person of interest at this point, not a suspect. We are using those terms because that's what the police are using for very specific reasons. We are being told that this Frank James person, that there is a series of, or a series of social media videos he posted. He talks about Eric Adams. He talks about homeless people. He talks about perhaps committing acts of violence. So how can that be used as an investigatory tool at this point? So that could go to establish some sort of motive if they are able to move him from a person of interest to a suspect. To my knowledge, those social media posts have been pulled down from the Internet and law enforcement is now looking into them, seeing when they were posted, IP addresses of where they may have been posted from, seeing if there's likes from possible co-conspirators or friends. Um, and honestly, it's going to aid in understanding the psychological behavior, maybe the motivation behind these acts. 62-year-old man, um, you know, Again, person of interest, not a suspect, but not always the age of a type of person you think in something like this. No, I was actually quite surprised when I saw a 62-year-old gentleman as the person of interest in this thing, because that's just behaviorally and criminologically speaking, that's not really what we're looking for. What do you think? I agree. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's out of the norm. So we'll see, we'll see what his motives are. They've got two of the three. They have a motive, opportunity, and means. They've already established the opportunity and the means of him or this individual committing this act. The whole thing now is motive. You can't eliminate terrorism. You never can until it's all said and done. But right now, it's why did he do it? And what was, what was his methodology behind doing this? Yeah, look, we have a gun. There's a gun, again, tied to the suspect, not necessarily Frank James. But we were told yesterday the gun wasn't purchased illegally. I mean, it's going to have a, a trove of information on that. Correct. So there... The federal, federal government, or through the ATF and the FBI, they're looking at uh, trying to trace that weapon, try to figure out where it was purchased, when it was purchased, and by whom. It doesn't mean that uh, James or whoever the individual is actually purchased it. It could be stolen at the time. So those are all the things that they're going to be looking for as far as the weapon, the weapon that was used to commit this crime. Look, New York City is a big place, easy place to hide, but the flip side of that is 
you know, nine million sets of eyes out there looking this morning, and the police and, and the FBI, everyone asking for help in locating him. Thank you so much Thank for you. helping us out this morning.